In the vast expanse of the East China Sea, a new colossus cuts through the waves, her gray steel glistening beneath the morning sun, her deck alive with activity, and her presence undeniable. This is Fujian, China's first domestically designed and built supercarrier, and the most powerful warship ever launched by the People's Liberation Army Navy. The day it entered service wasn't just another date on China's military calendar. It marked a turning point in naval history. For decades, the United States Navy stood unchallenged, its massive Nimitz and Ford-class carriers reigning as the ultimate symbols of power projection. But that dominance now faces a serious challenger, a new dragon on the seas. The rise of a new maritime superpower. For years, China's naval ambitions were seen as defensive, focused mainly on coastal protection and regional security. But that era is over. The commissioning of the Type 003 Fujian sends a clear and resounding message. China is ready to operate on the global stage, and it intends to do so with force, precision, and confidence. Named after the southeastern province across from Taiwan, Fujian represents more than an engineering triumph. It's a statement of intent. The ship's sheer scale is staggering. Over 316 meters long, 80,000 tons in displacement, and a flight deck wide enough to accommodate dozens of aircraft simultaneously. It is, in every sense, the embodiment of China's global ambition. A leap into the future. Emails and cutting-edge tech. What truly sets the Fujian apart is not just its size, but the technology it carries. This is the first Chinese carrier to employ emails, electromagnetic aircraft launch systems, the same advanced system used on the US Navy's Gerald R. Ford class carriers. Unlike the old steam catapult or ski jump systems used on previous Chinese carriers, emails uses electromagnetic energy to launch aircraft with greater efficiency, speed, and control. This means heavier aircraft, faster launch cycles, and longer operational range for carrier-based fighters. The J-35 Stealth Fighter, China's naval response to the American F-35C, will form the backbone of Fujian's air wing. Sleek, angular, and radar evading, the J-35 brings stealth and speed together in a way that few nations outside the U.S. have mastered. Paired with the KG-600 early warning aircraft, electronic warfare jets, and stealth drones, the Fujian will command the skies and seas alike with unmatched situational awareness. Engineering Marvel, Inside the Beast. Below deck, the Fujian is a masterpiece of Chinese shipbuilding. Its propulsion system, while conventionally powered, delivers impressive efficiency, propelling the ship to speeds exceeding 30 knots. Its island superstructure is smaller and sleeker, reducing radar signature and improving flight deck operations. Automation has been taken to new heights. Advanced digital systems reduce crew workload, while integrated combat management networks connect the Fujian seamlessly with other vessels, satellites, and land-based command centers. In other words, the Fujian isn't just a ship. It's a floating data hub an intelligent war machine capable of coordinating entire naval battles. Her internal hangars are massive, capable of housing over 60 aircraft, including fighters, refueling planes, and drones. With multiple elevators, automated rearming systems, and advanced maintenance facilities, aircraft turnaround times are faster than ever before, giving the Fujian the ability to sustain intense combat operations for extended periods of time. The symbolism of power. But perhaps the greatest significance of the Fujian lies beyond its hardware. This ship is a symbol, a declaration that China has mastered one of the most complex achievements in modern engineering, the construction of a true supercarrier. Just two decades ago, China's Navy was a coastal defense force with limited reach. Today, it boasts the largest Navy in the world by ship count, and the Fujian stands as its crown jewel. For the Chinese people, it represents not just military strength, but national pride and technological self-reliance. For the rest of the world, especially the United States, it represents something else, the beginning of a new era of maritime competition, a challenge to U.S. naval supremacy.
For nearly 80 years, the world's oceans have been America's domain. From the Atlantic to the Pacific, U.S. carrier strait groups have moved with impunity, projecting power wherever Washington wished. The very concept of American naval supremacy was built around one idea, that no rival could challenge the United States at sea. The Fujian changes that. It's not just a ship, it's a strategic equalizer. With its advanced launch systems, long-range aircraft, and integrated command structure, the Fujian gives China the ability to operate far from its shores, to project power into regions once thought unreachable. From the South China Sea to the Indian Ocean, and even into the Western Pacific, this single vessel extends China's military reach in ways that were unthinkable just a decade ago. How China Outpaced Expectations China's rise in naval power didn't happen overnight. It came through years of focused investment, relentless innovation, and an unparalleled shipbuilding infrastructure. While the U.S. takes over a decade to build one carrier, China has shown the ability to produce large warships in record time. The Dalian and Jiangnan shipyards, vast industrial complexes churning with activity, are now the beating heart of China's naval expansion. From destroyers and submarines to amphibious assault ships, China's naval production scale has become unmatched. This industrial power combined with a clear strategic vision has enabled Beijing to do what many thought impossible, close the technological gap with the West in less than a generation. A new maritime strategy. The Fujian fits perfectly into China's broader maritime vision, one that seeks to secure trade routes, protect overseas interests, and assert influence across global oceans. In the South China Sea, it serves as a deterrent, reinforcing Chinese territorial claims. In the Taiwan Strait, it acts as a symbol of readiness, a not-so-subtle reminder of Beijing's growing military reach. And in the Indian Ocean, it could escort Chinese shipping lanes and protect strategic ports linked to the Belt and Road Initiative. This is not just about military power, it's about strategic presence. Every movement of the Fujian will carry political weight, signaling China's intent and reshaping the global balance of power. The next phase, Type 004 and beyond. Before Fujian entered service, reports surfaced that China is already developing its next carrier, the Type 004, rumored to be nuclear-powered. This future carrier could operate indefinitely at sea, rivaling even the mightiest Ford class in endurance and power projection. Together, these carriers could form the core of multiple Chinese carrier strike groups, each capable of independent global operations. The vision is clear. By the 2030s, China could possess a navy not just equal to the US, but one that outnumbers and outpaces it in nearly every category. A new maritime rivalry. The commissioning of the Fujian marks the start of a new chapter, a naval renaissance driven by competition. The United States, for the first time in modern history, faces a peer rival capable of matching its carrier capabilities. The implications are enormous. New strategies, new alliances, and new risks. The Pacific Ocean, once considered an American lake, may soon become a contested arena where two superpowers maneuver for dominance, each determined not to blink first. Conclusion The dawn of a new naval order As the Fujian sails across the open sea, her silhouette towering over the horizon, one truth becomes undeniable. The era of unchallenged American dominance at sea is ending. This colossal vessel is not just a feat of engineering. It is the physical manifestation of China's ambition, discipline, and desire to reclaim its place as a global maritime power. The Fujian represents a shift in world order, 
a declaration that the oceans are no longer the exclusive playground of one superpower. It is the beginning of a new race, one that will shape the next century of naval warfare. And somewhere across the Pacific, American admirals are watching, knowing that the balance of power has begun to tilt and that the dragon has finally taken to the sea.